and welcome to my latest blog about me learning to play the Anglo concertina and today I'm playing my G D uh, instrument which means to say that this middle row is in the key of G and the row nearest to me is in the key of D and of course the outer row nearest the front of the concertina uh, has all accidental notes or mainly accidental notes um, I haven't done a blog for a while because I've been busy learning uh, new tunes and new styles and I'm sort of doing a mixture of uh, single note stuff um, and also some what I call Melodian style playing where I'm kind of playing a, a bass line with the left hand and the tune mainly with the right hand but sometimes I need notes on the left hand side for the tune as well. Home on the range obviously that's a single note job no, no sort of backing there just the tune but because it's the tune you can put your heart and soul into the expression and it kind of reminds me of a kind of a campfire in a cowboy film uh, not that I've ever been to America but uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about there are some really lovely low notes on this concertina playing in the key of G you've got this uh lovely expressive low notes there some of the tune is on the left hand side and some is on the right, it starts on the left, goes to the right. This tune you can find uh, on my website, and the address is on your screen now. Uh, my tablature for the Anglo is pretty easy to understand. Uh, you've got uh, left and right hand side, five buttons on each, of course. Um, if it's on the uh, G row, the letters or the notes are in capitals. Uh, and you can see that all this tune is in written in capitals because it's all on the G row. If there are notes on the D row, the row nearest to me, they would be written in lowercase. If a note has a minus sign to the left of it, it's pulled, otherwise it's pushed. 
Uh, so pretty straightforward. Um, I'm starting to use my air button, this button here on the right hand side which allows air in and out of the bellows and you need to adjust every now and again so that you've got enough air to play the notes that you want. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. See there, I'll pull the bellows out so I've got a nice lot for that push. Obviously if you operate the air button while you're playing a note, it obviously dims the volume so you have to pull or push extra hard to make up for that. Um, on my tablature, if a note occupies more than one cell, then it's held for longer. Uh, if you look at the first note of the third page, it occupies three cells, so it takes up the whole of the first three beats, or the whole of that bar in fact. So pretty straightforward, lovely and expressive, and you'll find that one, as I say, on my website. I skipped my loo, couldn't get much more straightforward than this, I just put this in just to show you uh, a very basic, what I call melodian style, so it's simply uh, G and D7. This is a bass note and a couple of notes for the chord. So not quite the same as the melodium where you get um, one button gives you a note, one button gives you the chord. You have to make your chords up with several buttons but it's not too hard once you get used to it. And the, uh, the G and the D7 actually are the same buttons. Buttons one, three and four. Use fingers four, um, two and one. And um, the tune all on the right hand side. So you've got a... Nice air button there, quick pull out to get that. air button while you're playing there. You give the air button a little squirt there. There. So when you play this kind of tune, you want to play it very... very staccato. And that way, of course, you don't eat up so much uh, air, or use up so much air. And the tune is all on these three buttons on the right hand side. Uh, on that G row. Perhaps you'll have noticed as I was playing it there, I was giving the air button there a little squirt with the side of my thumb uh, every now and again so to make sure I've got enough air to play the notes. Pretty straightforward. Then I played a couple of tunes where I was sustaining the chords, not going um pa, but So if I play you a uh, home sweet home, uh... So the three chords I'm using there, obviously G, D7 and C. The way I learned to play the C chord in the first place was using a button on each row. A C here, button one accidental row, um, a G here, button four uh, on the D row, and an E here, button five on the G row. So you have got the three notes of the chord. An easy way, is actually to play, instead of playing the G here, play a C here on the uh, G row. Okay, you've got two C's, an octave apart, but C and an E together. 
makes a, a really good sound, I think, and it's much easier. So when I play the C chord now, I'm tending to do that. Um, now, up to that point, all of the notes on the, in the tune all on the right hand side, all on the first four buttons, but then I have to move up and play the fifth button on the pull as I play the C chord with the left hand. And I'm playing uh, an F sharp and an E. I'm in the key of G here. An F sharp and an E, okay? And then I go back to pu uh, pushing. Again that. Okay, a couple of things to say there. So it's two positions. You've got, and then uh, you're using fingers one, two, three, four on the first four buttons there, but then you have to move down so the little finger is on button five and the third finger is on button four, and then jump back. So two positions there. With this kind of piece, it's not a great idea to sustain the chord the whole time you're playing. Uh, but rather to do little bursts of the chord, and I'll show what I mean. gives the, the tune a chance to sort of grin through, to shine through. Uh, one little thing I'm doing wrong here is I'm catching the uh, tune note uh, with the bellows in the wrong direction. So in other words, I'll be wanting to play the note on the pull and I just catch the, the note on the push uh, before I change bellows direction. That's just lack of experience, uh, but gradually I'll get that sorted out. And then Old Lang Syne in the same style, but this time very interesting because you've got part of the tune on the left hand side. Now with this kind of playing you tend to think of sort of this is the bass and this is the treble, but actually the tune crops up in the left hand side, I'll show you what I mean. Straight away the very first note of the tune is this D, button 5 on the G row. Pull the bellows out so you've got plenty of air. Notice it's there. When I play that G note uh, on the right hand side, I don't put any bass with it. And there. That note of E is uh, obviously the tune, and it's part of the C chord there. Push it in for the D, and then you've got the, the G note on the right hand side. So, very much mixed up, isn't it? The bass and the treble there. enjoy uh, mixing the two up to get the tune. So that's not everything I've been playing, there's lots of other tunes I've been working on but I think four is probably enough for one video. Gives you an idea of uh, a little bit of progress I've made, still a long way off uh, from being a competent player, uh, still got the odd nervous mistake here and there but really enjoying uh, the journey as they say. Um, it's a really is a lovely instrument and um, so grateful to Frank Edgley who made it uh, for sorting it all out for me before he sent it all the way from Canada to here in the UK. I'm still playing my CG and my Irish stuff and learning new tunes there and I'll show you those in uh, subsequent videos.
one thing I did do which was to uh, get a nice diagram of all my notes exactly as they are on this particular instrument because obviously instruments vary uh, and this really helps and see what I've got uh, and uh, that's been a, a real help to me so if, you've, if you're learning I strongly advise you to do the same thing Anyway, that's the end of this blog. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.